Hello guys, today I am going to explain about the moving the data in and out of the hub. So Hadoop will take the data into uh, from the all the external sources and as well as uh, we can uh, retrieve the data which is stored in the HDFS also. So that's why they have given like uh, moving the data in and out of the Hadoop. So moving the data in and out of the Hadoop uh, is called as data ingress. If the data is sent into the Hadoop that is called as the data ingress. And if the data is moved out of the Hadoop means that is called as the data egress. Two different terminologies are there here. Uh, and it is the process by which uh, data is transported from an external system into an internal system here. How the data is transported from the external system? External system means multiple sources are there where we can fed our data into the Hadoop. And uh, where, uh, for example, if it say like uh, I can take the data from the CSV files or normal text files or Google BigQueries or Pentaho BI or normal tab, anything from many, many number of applications, I can take the data and I can send it to the Hadoop here. And Hadoop supports usually these ingress and egress mechanisms uh, in the HDFS and as well as in the mappings. So we can move the files in and out of the HDFS where that movement is very important here. And the data can be pulled from the external data sources and pushed to the external data sinks using the map reduce here. So following the three types of jobs are common in the Uzi here. That is a Uzi it is I told you in the previous video also Uzi is a very good example for the coordinator and for the workflow jobs. So Uzi workflow jobs, how these can be represented means these are represented as directed acyclic graphs. We can call it like DAGs uh, to specify the sequence of actions. What are the actions that have to be executed in some sequential order? Those are called as the Uzi workflow jobs. And the Uzi coordinator jobs means this Uzi, we can call it like it is uh, like a coordinator also where it will, uh, all the workflow jobs are triggered by time and the data availability. And the Uzi bundle, Uzi bundle means we can call it like it is a package of all the multiple coordinators and as well as the workflow, these two as a combination we can call it like a Uzi bundle. So let's see few examples uh, how data ingress and egress transports the data to and from the external system to our internal one. So if you see here uh, in between we are having the HDFS and MapReduce are there and uh, see uh, this is the entire part of the data ingress where uh, in that data ingress, I am having the log data is there and files, few files are there, normal files and uh, I am having the data from the HBase and NoSQL databases also and I can take the data from the OLTP databases also. See, we can call it like uh, log collectors and file ingress mechanisms are there. All this particular data, I am going to send a copy into the HDFS and the MapReduce. So, till here, this is called as the data ingress mechanisms. Suppose if you want to say it like what is meant by data egress mechanisms means from the HDFS and from the map reduce you want to set it to the file egress and uh, to the files also. And from the map reduce also you want to send it to the no HBase or no SQL or OLTP databases or OLAP databases. So if you want to retrieve any data from this HDFS or map reduce means this is called as a data egress. So data ingress and data egress two mechanisms are there which will be supported by the Hadoop to move the data from and out of the Hadoop. Next, uh, we will see what are the key elements of the ingress and the egress mechanisms. See, among those first one is the item potency. See, what is meant by item potency means? Uh, we can say it like uh, we are going to produce the same result no matter how many times we are going to execute. And we will execute 10 times or 100 times, but I am going to get the same result. Right, uh, that is called as item potency. In the relational databases supports, let's take the example of the insert operation. So, this insert operation, it is not item potent. Why? Because if each and every time, whenever you are inserting, we are going to insert some new data into the databases. Right? So, in such cases, we can say it like uh, insert operations are not at all item potent. And uh, because executing them multiple times will produce the same result in the database. Team. But uh, if you take the updates, what are those? If any system updates are there, these are item potent. Why? Because if you are going to update your system, you will get the same application with new features and functionalities. So that's why we can say that uh, updates are often item potent. So anytime, whenever the data is being written, item potent should be considered and uh, data ingress and egress in Hadoop is no different here. So it is not at all different compared to these uh, item potent operations. And how well do the distributed log collection frameworks deal with the data retransmissions? So how do you ensure how we are going to give the assurance for the item potent behavior in the 
may produce jobs why because we are going to check when multiple tasks are running in parallel in a database in the hadoop how we are going to uh, uh, ensure the idempotent behavior here so that is about the uh, idempotence next one is the aggregation what is meant by the aggregation means the data aggregation process combines the multiple data elements here so in the context of the data ingress uh, this can be useful because uh, uh aggregation means uh, combining all the multiple elements into one single element so where we can move the large quantities of the small files into the hd apis where we can translate into the name node and as well as into the uh, map reduce execution types so having this ability to aggregate the files or combining the files so uh, we can mitigate the problem and it is a feature to consider here and the next one is the data format transformations what is the data format transformations here this data format transformations process converts one data into the another here so often your source data is not in a format uh, that it will deal for processing in the tool such as the map reduce so if your source data is multi line xml or json form uh, for example you may want to consider a pre processing step so how we are going to convert uh, one format of the data into the another format so i'm having multiple formats of the data will be there like uh, Uh, i can be having my csv files or txt files or json files or bsn files whatever the files are there we were able to convert the data in one form or we can split it into the another form here that is uh, where all these conversions usually it will be done by the apache evro all the data format transformations next one is the recoverability what is meant by recoverability here recoverability means it will allow us an ingress and egress tool to retry in an event of the failed operation so we can't say that all the operations will be success so few operations will be there which are which got failed so what to do in such cases so what we will do we should be able to recover all the data which has been failed so data corruption will be there we should be able to recover from those data corruptions right so in how much amount of time we are going to uh, retrieve all the data here so data sources sync or hadoop itself can be the 100% available here where it is important that an ingress or egress action be retried in the event of failures here and next one is the correctness so correctness means in the context of the data transportation checking for the correctness is how you verify that no data corruption occurred as the data was in the transit so when you work with heterogeneous systems such as hadoop data ingress and egress tools the fact that the data is being transported across different hosts so when you work with the heterogeneous systems uh, see correctness means i can check it for uh, whatever the input data i am going to give whether i am going to get the same output data even when we are going to transfer from the client to the server so we have to see it right because in between many things may happen uh, many corruptions may uh, may happen and the data may be uh, changed sometimes because of many problems here so how to do that correctness issues means uh, we i can go for uh, Uh, many techniques like we are having the crc crc means cyclic redundancy checks we can perform the cyclic redundancy checks in order to um, provide the uh, data correctness uh, while transferring the data from one place to the another place next one is the resource consumption and the performance what is this resource consumption and the performance so resources means we are having lot of system uh, uh, resources utilizations are there and system efficiency and uh, Uh, respectively how we can uh, measure all these uh, resource consumptions and as well as the performance here. so ingress and egress tools uh, don't typically uh, incur the significant loads on a system unless you have the appreciable data volumes so for performance uh, the questions to ask include whether the tool performs ingress and egress activities in parallel and uh, if so what mechanisms it provides uh, to tool the amounts of the parallelism here Mm. and uh, for example if you are a data source is a production database don't use the large number of concurrent map tasks uh, to import the data here uh, for example if your data source is a production database uh, we should not use uh, the large number of concurrent map tasks to import our data here so performance always matters here and uh, we will see that uh, uh, within a fraction of time all our systems has to work um, parallelly if uh, even though 100 machines are there and where resource consumption means we will always uh, check for the significant load how much amount of load we are going to dump on your system sir but still whether it is working or not whether it is uh, able to consume all the resources or not so that itself will give you the resource consumptions and the 
performance. These are the basic key elements in this uh, example and one more one is the monitoring is there. What is this monitoring means monitoring we know that uh, uh, it will ensure some functions like uh, data ingress and egress monitoring. It will break down into the two elements like uh, ensuring the process involved in the ingress and the egress uh, and validating that source and destination data are being uh, produced as expected here. And uh, moving the data into the Hadoop. Moving the data into the Hadoop. Let's see a few examples that how to push the log files into the Hadoop here. See, we are having the few examples are there like uh, comparing the flume, chokwa and the scribe. See, here I am having uh, log fave, 4G appendages are there and uh, I am having a few log files are there and I am having the log files from the UDP and the DCPs and I am having STD out uh, already executable files are there and custom data sources are there where all these files I am going to send it to the agent nodes are and from these agent nodes all the data will be forwarded to the collector nodes and from the collector nodes to the HDFAs or HBAs or flat files or to the custom data sets. and again this master node is responsible for coordinating with all the agent nodes and the collector nodes. Next one is the Apache Chukwa. If you take this Chukwa, this is the architecture of the Chukwa. That means let's see how your data will be flowed from the all the multiple sources like Apache Chukwa, Apache Flume or Apache Scribe to the HDFS. So, I have a few examples are there like again I am having the log 4G appendages are there and text files are there and again from the networking applications also we are going to get the files like UDP and the TCP files. From there I can send my data to the agent nodes where agent nodes it is responsible for collecting all the data from the multiple sources and it is going to fed the data to the collectors and these collectors are responsible for forwarding your data to the HDFS and the HBs. From the HDFS again I can send to the MySQL and from the MySQL to the HICC. HICC means Hadoop Infrastructure Care Centers. And again I am having here one more thing like a demultiplexers are there. Demultiplexers means from all the multiple streams data I am going to convert it into one output data here. From there I can send it uh, my job to the MapReduce and MapReduce to the HDFS and from the HDFS to the MySQL and then to the HICC. This is the architecture of the Apache Chukwa and Apache Scribe. If you see the Apache Scribe also the same things are there. I am having the data from the text log files and the system log files like TCP and the UDP and we are having the log 4G appendages are there. Custom tail and forward mechanisms are there and custom and next to the server and then to the central server and then to the uh, HDFS and the file systems. So, this is the entire architecture of the Apache scribe. And next one is how the uh, data we can push it uh, log messages into the HDFS with flu. See here I am having few data sources are there uh, like uh, Apache uh, Flume. See here this Flume again it is going to send it to the agent nodes and the collector nodes and uh, below we are having the master node out there where it is responsible for coordinating with the Apache Flume. Followed by we are having the few data sinks are there. What is that data sinks means uh, it is nothing but HDFS or uh, it is nothing but HDFS or sequence files or TCP log servers and the text files. Next, uh, what are the uh, primary components of the flume? We are having the node files are there, agents, collectors and the master files are there. Nodes means uh, uh, from the multiple parts we are going to get our data and that data we are going to move it to uh, few blocks. Those are nothing but the nodes here. Uh, and agents and collectors are simply. So, if you take these agents and collectors, all these things we can call it like simply flume nodes where these agents are responsible for collecting all the streaming data from the local host and forward it to the collectors. What is the role of these collectors? These collectors will aggregate the data which is collected from the agent nodes and they are going to dump directly the data into the HDFS. Then what about the master node? Master node will perform the configuration management tasks and it will help us for the reliable data flows here. So these are the main and the primary components of the flow. And uh, if you see one more example here again we are having the another example that I am having the uh, host nodes are there variable and log messages are there where I can send it to the flume agent and flume collectors and then to the HDFS. This is one more example how a data can be dumped into the HDFS. Next from the uh, flume data sources see if you take the flume data sources again I am going to take the data from the data sources uh, to the flume agents and then to the flume collectors and then to the HDFS. 
and the automated mechanism to copy the files into the HDMS. So if you see here how to pull the data from those databases. See, I'm having the data uh, like uh, from the OLTP are there and from the log files data will be there that I'm going to send it to the Hadoop and from the Hadoop I'm going to send the data to the OLAP systems like a uh, join, filter and analyze. Next, uh, uh, yeah, next one more uh, diagram is there where uh, how your MapReduce is going to function in the four stages uh, where DB input format is used to pull the data from the database. See, uh, if we are having, uh, yeah, we can determine the number of rows to pull the data here. So, I am having the client is there and this client is, it is responsible for uh, coordinating with the JDBC drivers and uh, it can coordinate with the RDBMS also. With the help of the JDBC drivers, it can connect it to the RDBMS. And if you launch uh, the MapReduce job here, this MapReduce map job, it is responsible in uh, performing the two functions, right? Uh, it has to retrieve the data from the RDBMS using the JDBC drivers, using the DB input format functions and then from the mapping functions again I am going to send it to the Apache our output format and from the Apache output format to the Hadoop R RPC means remote processor calls and from there we are going to write the data into the HDFS. So this is the first stage how to determine or how to pull the data, how many number of data I have to pull it. Second one is launching the MapReduce job. Third one is pulling the data from the databases and fourth one is dumping the data into the HDFS. This is one more example. And see, if you take the scoop, how we are going to import the data from the MySQL. See, we are having a uh, client is there and from the client, I am going to send the uh, data to the scoop here and from the scoop, uh, MapReduce jobs will be launched here. And here, uh, uh, map, uh, Apache scoop will come into the picture here. And it is going to take the data only from the RDBMS files. What are those RDBMS multiple sources? I can take it like uh, MySQL or PostgreSQL or Oracle or SQL Servers or DB2. I can take it from any of these data sources and I can dump it to the RDBMS. But my scoop is responsible only for retrieving the data from the RDBMS files. And after retrieving uh, uh, the Apache scoop, it is responsible for sending the data to the data sinks. What is meant by data sync here? Data sync means nothing but I can send the data to the HDFS or Hive or HBS. I can send it to any sort of application here using the Apache scoop to import the data here. So again we are having the scoop connectors are there. What are those scoop connectors to read and write the data to the external systems? That is MySQL, PostgreSQL, Oracle or SQL Server I can use it and DB2 or JDBCs also. And fast connectors, uh, you, usually we can use it like MySQL or PostgreSQL, we can use it. So, that's all for today guys. Uh, I hope you like this video.